welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Marek Grabowski and this is Wojtek Tyczyński. We're from Google Warsaw office, uh, wearing the hoodie that Aparna actually advertised in, in her keynote. Uh, we are the part of Kubernetes team for over two years now, and part of our job was, involved, well, was related to the scheduling and the scheduler itself. So we, we're here today to tell you about all the Kubernetes features that, uh, sorry, scheduler features that uh, allow you to have a greater control over how pods, uh, how pods run in your cluster. So what can you do to make the system put the pods on the nodes you want it to? Uh, the main focus will be on features that went beta in 1.6 release yesterday, which is mostly the ones that, that Aparna mentioned during the Herky note. And we will do it by showing you some use cases and, uh, and uh, and explaining how those features can help in, in the situation scenarios like, like that. Uh, I want to know that scheduling in Kubernetes is a huge subject. Like pretty much every release from the beginning, there was some new features added to the scheduler, some new functions, some new something, which makes it impossible to just tell everything uh, in, in this area, in this short talk, in the, in the time that we have. Uh, we also want tell anything about implementation details. So like if you're interested in like how we deal with conflicts or pretty much any like caching and, and other internal stuff uh, in scheduler, then this is not the talk for you, but you can catch us later. Uh, after the talk, we can answer probably most of your questions. Uh, let's start with telling a bit how the scheduler works and actually what it's supposed to do. As probably most of you know, the goal, like the, the main goal of the scheduler is to assign a node to a pod. So like when the user creates a pod, and by user I mean of course like user or a replica set or something that creates a pod that's not already bound to a node, uh, the, the, the scheduler is the, is the component that takes this pod and figures out which node is the best for this pod to run. And how it does it. I did a quick deck now. I will quickly uh, show you what is happening inside the scheduler when it's happening, because it's important to, to understand the, the, what, can, what can you do to actually influence uh, the, the outputs. Uh, there, are two there are two phases uh, of the scheduling. So when we try to schedule a pod, the scheduler takes all the nodes in the cluster and passes into a bit, uh, passes in th it through two sets of functions. First set of functions is called predicates, and second phase of uh, second phase is called priorities. Uh, predicates are responsible for figuring out which nodes are feasible at all. So, like on which nodes the pod can run at all. So like which ones we want to just discard and do not care about in the uh, future processing. While the priority phase is just scoring the uh, nodes with some, like just assign some scores to nodes, after which the scheduler can just pick the node with the highest score or like on randomly one of the, the nodes of the highest scores and add the, the, the pod and then put the pod there. Uh, so when like both of these these phases, this priority predicate phase and the priority phase consists of a number of like functions. So there's like a number of predicate functions, each of them computed independently. And if any of those predicate functions fail for a given node, this node will not will not be processed any anymore. On the other hand, like there's like also the list of priority functions, which is also computed for every node from the output of the predicate functions, predicate step, uh, which just assigns a scores. And after all of those functions put their score for this node, the the the, uh, the scores are combined in a way that Wojtek will be uh, telling later to to figure out the final score of a node, which is kind of inferred like in inferred from all the scores from the single functions, uh, uh, priority functions. Uh, 
from like how you can influence the output. First thing, first way you can do it is to actually specify what kind of predicate and priority functions your scheduler should use. You can do it when during the scheduler startup, you can just specify which functions, which prior predicate functions the, the, the scheduler will compute in the predicate phase and which functions it will use during the, and other, and, and the, fun the functions that it will use during the priorities phase. <coughs> Uh, but this is what you do during the cluster setup and schedule startup. Other way you can influence it is to use the features that were moved to to beta uh, in 1.6, which will which we will just go through uh, right now. I will speak about predicates, and Wojtek will speak I'll speak about priorities. Uh, Let's start with, with the predicates uh, functions. Uh, and I want to begin with the very, very simple and basic kind of predicates that you actually do not need to specify anything to uh, use them, which kind of protect your cluster from doing like bad things. For example, overcommit nodes. Um, when the, the, the predicate is called pod feeds resources, and it does exactly as it, what it promises, it checks if resource requirements of a pod can be met on a given node. And uh, by this, I mean that, like, as most of you hopefully know, resource requirements for the pod uh, are split into two, 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 two classes. Like, first is like uh, pod, sorry, resource requests, and the second one is resource limits. Scheduler do not care about resource limits at all. Like this is something for Kubelet to use. Scheduler cares only about resource requests, uh, and it's based what what it does is basically subtracts all the requested resources of the run the, the pods running on the nodes from the node capacity and checks if the what's left is enough to fill full uh, requests of the pod that's being scheduled. Uh, by resources, I currently mean CPU, memory, and GPUs that are like predefined Kubernetes resources, but there are more, more to come in, in the future, probably. Uh, so that was the uh, very simple and very basic predicate that will always be computed, unless you disable it in, for some reason, but you shouldn't. Uh, now I'm going to tell you about those features that we added in, in 1.6. Uh, the first use case I want to, to talk about is uh, preven prevention of co-scheduling. So imagine you have two kinds of pods, like the dog pods and cat pods, right? Like you probably don't want to schedule cat pod and a dog pod on a single node, like because we all know what happens when you put a dog cat and a dog on a small container, right? Like this usually ends badly. Uh, even without this feature, you can kind of deal with it. For example, you can specify resource requests for cat and dog pods so that they won't fit on a single node. But then you will, the utilization of your cluster will drop because like, you just need those slack to just prevent them to be scheduled on the same node. Uh, so instead, you can use pod anti-affinity that Aparna uh, spoke in during her keynote, but I will explain it in a bit more, more detail. Uh, when you define pod anti-affinity, you specify two things, topology key and the label selector. Uh, topology key is something that relates to nodes, and label selector is something to, to relates to pods. And it works in a following way. Uh, imagine that you have a cluster uh, with nine, nine nodes. And on those, no those nodes have labels that like correspond to colors. For example, they Left-hand side uh, nodes have a uh, label color and a value red. Mi middle ones have like value equals yellow, and right ones have a value equals uh, green. Uh, the the way the topology key works is you define like, and if, and if you use the topology color, it will cause the grouping it, uh, of the nodes into this color group. So like you have a red group, the yellow group, and the uh, green group of nodes. This is what topology key does. Uh, to, to check if uh, the pod kind of meets the pod anti-affinity um, predicate, 
uh, you, 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 do, you do the following. For, for that group, you take all the pods running on all the nodes on this group. So for example, you take all the pods running on the red nodes and check if any of those pods uh, like match the label selector, which is the second part of the pod anti-affinity definition, right? Uh, there is no cut pod running uh, on any of those nodes, which means like their nodes, the, all of those nodes are fine, right? Like you can schedule the dog pod on, on any of those, of those nodes. On the other hand, like there is just one, but still there is a, a pod, the cut pod running on a, one of the yellow nodes, which means n you can't schedule the dog pod of any on the yellow nodes. Like the same goes for, 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 for the green ones. Right, so this is the, the, the semantics of the uh, pot anti-affinity and also affinity, uh, which I will tell uh, in a second. Uh, but like, as you can probably imagine, it's pretty computer, computer initially expensive to compute all of those. So we actually, uh, in 1.6, we limited the topology keys to be used to host name, which basically makes a group of a single node, uh, the groups of single nodes. A zone and a region, which also should be self-explanatory. So you can prevent scheduling of the same of the pod on the, in the same region as some other pods are running, for example. Uh, and if you just put the uh, this kind of pod anti-affinity in your dog pod, then it won't be able to schedule of any uh, on the on the nodes when cat pod is is running. There's also the opposite feature that it's kind of probably easy to figure out right by now, which is pod affinity, which forces cost scheduling of pods. So like imagine you have a sapling pod and a watering can pod, and you probably want them to run together. Like the example is maybe there's like a, a there's a, you need a lot of network throughput between those two, two pods. You probably want to put them as close as to them as to, to itself as, as possible, Ho hopefully in the same node. Um, so uh, you could, o of course, you can also hack around it without this feature, like whatever put in a single pod, which you shouldn't do because like, it breaks the whole uh, microservice idea. Uh, but you was able to do it before that. Right now, it's pretty simple. What you need to do is to just define the pod affinity, which is exactly the same as pod anti-affinity, except that this, there's no anti word in, in, the, in the definition, uh, with the semantics that is pretty easy to figure out basically just reverses uh, the, the logic. Like we discard the nodes from the groups that do not have any of the pods matching the selector running, and we keep the nodes from the groups that do have uh, pods or the given selector running. Right. So this put, should, should be uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, the Another example, like use case, I wanted to show you is uh, like the, the situation in which you want to create a dedicated set of nodes for some users to use and prevent all other users from using it. Like what you was able to do before that, before 1.6, you could just force the, the, the users you don't want to use those uh, nodes to use some labels, uh, node selector. Uh, that won't match the some set of, of some set of nodes, and it will be running in everywhere else. But uh, in 1.6, we added the taints, which Aparn also told about, which allow you to do it in a way better, uh, way better way. The example I have here is that you have a user, the black user, which runs a, a serving pod, that's a, that's a blue pod, and you have a red user, which runs like a huge bad job, like the, the, the he just wants to start like in infinite number of some small pods just to compute something. Uh, what can happen, of course, is that like the red user will just schedule all his pods everywhere and just saturate the cluster, so there will be no space for uh, the black user to schedule his serving pod, which is usually bad because we care about serving pods, right? Uh, when you use taint, which is basically this slide, you specify like you can add a taint to a node and the taint says scheduler do not schedule anything on this node unless it has a matching toleration so like this node will be unavailable for 
the users who can't add this toleration to, uh, to their pods. Uh, what does it mean, the matching toleration? Uh, uh, toler taints have, like taint effect, no schedule, it should be uh, self-explanatory, but it has key, key and value, which ide identifies the, the taint. And toleration has like four things, the key value and operator, which defines which taints they match and taint effect which should match the taint as well. So the operator is either equal or exists. If the operator is equal, which is default, then both key and value of the taint needs to match what is written in toleration. And when it exists, uh, only the key matters. So like, it means that we uh, only care about existing of a taint of a given key. So like, we do not check the, the, the value or the value part. Uh, also, if, you, if I recall correctly, if you do not put taint there, uh, it is treated as a wild card, so it just match all the taint. So it, it, it would be a toleration that matches everything. So once you do that, like you kind of take out the blue node from, from the cluster, uh, from the red, no red user's perspective, so we won't be able to schedule those two pods that are an example, but the, thanks to that, the black user will have always have space to schedule his serving job and will be happy. Uh, like the red user won't, won't be happy on the other hand, but like if there's not resor enough resources in a cluster to satisfy everyone, someone will end up being unhappy, right? Like you can't do anything about it. Um, okay, so that's uh, the features, uh, the, the predicates I wanted to talk about. Uh, to quickly wrap up, it was like how the, um, how uh, predicates help you to prevent overcommit uh, of the nodes, which is like the basic ones that is always applied. How you can use pod anti affinity to prevent co scheduling, how you can use pod affinity to force co scheduling of, of pods, and how you can use taints and tolerations to create a dedicated nodes for some set of, of your users. And right now, I want to uh, leave you with Wojtek, who will tell you more about priorities. Thank you. Okay, so with the pre with predicates already applied, we already filter out all the nodes that we actually can't schedule our pod, but still the group of remaining nodes can be pretty large. So how we can actually choose this one node on which our pod should be scheduled on? And this is basically where priorities come into play. So I will start with like describing the most important ones. I do we don't have time to describe all of them, but I think that it should be fine. So. The first one is actually connected to the amount of resources uh, available on the node. So after applying predicates, we know that there is enough space on, on the node, but which one is actually the best one? So the policy that we, are, that we chose here is basically that we would like to spread uh, the amount of resources requested by pods as evenly as possible across nodes. So. Technically, actually, we are the, the priority function works on ratio of requested resources by, uh, by resources requested by all pods running on a node to the node capacity to make it work. Uh, if there are nodes with different sizes in the cluster, but for simplicity, let's assume that all nodes are equal. And then, like this function, basically means that the more available resources are on a node, the better the node is. But actually, like, is it really the best policy? So, so, so it seems roughly reasonable if if the cluster is like has predefined size and like and stuff like that. So, but if we are running, for example, for example, in a cloud and you have cloud auto scaler, then having an empty node means that we can basically remove it and uh, and like reduce our the cost of the underlying infrastructure. So, so. That sounds like uh, something that we would like to have, and because of that, like we created this opposite priority function, which which basically prefers nodes that are rough, uh, like that can that can handle our pod, like have enough spare resources, but like are more full than others. And with that, we with that function, we are basically trying to make the nodes that have some pods already running on them full before scheduling anything to some empty pods, uh, empty nodes, sorry. 
And obviously, like those two priority functions conflict with each other, so we can't use both of them at the same time. Uh, by default, we are using the previous one, which is like worst fit. But like the important feature of scheduler, which Marek briefly mentioned before, is that scheduler is configurable. So you can configure it so that like it will use this one function. Uh, wh when starting a scheduler, you can configure it like so that it will use this one instead of the previous one. Okay, so another priority function is, is about spreading. So imagine that you have a deployment or replication controller running in, in instances of a pod. So obviously you are running those n instances for some reason and you most probably don't want a bunch of them to be running on the same node because if the node fails, then you will lose all of those replicas at the same time. But like fault tolerance is just one reason of not wanting to, to, to have them on the same node. So the other reason can be that uh, usage spikes of all those pods can, can be correlated and like we, they, would, they would be spiking at the same time. So selector spreading priority function is supposed to solve this problem. Uh, so basically the more pods coming from, a, from the same deployment service, replication controller or something are running on, on a given node, the lower the lower score this 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 node will get. Okay, so those two five. So now we are going to a slightly different group of priorities. Like the the, the ones that I briefly described like before are just working out of the box for e every pod. But starting from now, we have we will have some functions that a pod can define some preference where it would like to run. And this, this, its preference will affect scores of, of, of the nodes. So the first example of, of such function is node affinity, where pod can specify a selector for nodes in, on which it would prefer to, to run. If it doesn't specify any selector, then all the nodes will be scored exactly in a, with exactly the same score according to this priority function. So in the example from the slide, uh, the pod specifies that it would like to run on green, on a, on a node with a green color. And as a result, like both green nodes are getting the, the highest possible score and, and all other nodes are getting like the lowest for this particular priority function. So the next one is pod affinity, which is basically a sibling priority function to, to the predicate that, predicate that Marek described earlier. So what we would like to achieve is that we would like to, to recall to, uh, to, to, ensure, to, to ensure that our pod is collocated with as many uh, pods selected, specified by the preference selector as possible. And like similarly as with predicate, the collocation doesn't necessarily mean collocation within the same node. It, it is collocation within some group of nodes, which can be node itself, but it can be like rack or zone or, or region or something like that. And the example from the slide, uh, we would, our pod would like to be collocated with, with green with green with as many green pods as possible uh, within the same within the nodes of the same color. And as a result, like the yellow nodes are getting the highest score because there are like two green pods altogether there. And the red node, for example, is getting the lowest possible score because there are no green pods there. Uh, yes, so also similarly as with, uh, as with predicates, we have anti-affinity here, which where, where we would like to our pod to 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 be collocated with as few pods specified by its like anti-preference selector as possible within the same group of nodes. So maybe to give you an ex a real, more, more real or real life-ish example of this. So imagine that you, you, are, you would like to schedule n, n instances of a pod running a database. And on one case, you would like to have them to be spread across nodes, racks, or there uh, for fault tolerance. But on the other hand, you would like to have a database as close to any to to any application backend you are running as possible for to reduce latency for communication with it, and to to achieve it you can for example specify the 
anti-preference selector, what I call it, uh, to match exactly those pods running this database and set, for, the, for example, the grouping to a rack. And then what you will get is that those pods, those database pods will be spread across racks. And why we can't use predicate for that is basically because if the number of instances of the pod are, is pretty big, uh, then we still want to allow scheduling all of them and potentially running more of them within the same rack. Uh, whereas with predicates, you are pretty much allowed to run one instances within the same group of nodes. So, so that so that's the example where we can't actually use use predicate. Oh, so getting back to example from the slide, like. Similarly, as with predicates here, like we, the, the red node is getting the highest possible score because there are no blue pods, and like for example, blue, uh, green nodes are getting the lowest possible score because there are two, two blue pods. And we are not, similarly as with predicates, we are not differentiating groups from the say, uh, nodes from the same group. Okay, so now, now we we have a few more priority functions, but unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go over all of them. But uh, for now, like we already have some number of scores for each node, uh, and we somehow would like to combine them to get the final score of the of the of the node. And to 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 clarify, like the tech the some technical detail of it is that priority function is supposed to return an integer from zero to ten, which I will be kind of using later. And the question is like how to combine those, those, those numbers for a single node to get one number, the final score of a node. And what we are doing here is basically we are just taking some linear combination of, of those scores with appropriate waves. So where those waves are actually coming from? So when, when you are defining, uh, when you are running a scheduler and you are defining a priority function, you are also supposed to, uh, to assign a, a, a wave to this priority function. And it can be like arbitrary integer. And the, the, the reasoning behind this integer is to reflect how important this, this priority function actually is. And th those waves are exactly those that we are using here when like, computing this linear combination of, of of those scores from individual priority functions. So once we have those, the, the, the final score for each node, we are simply just choosing the node with the highest score. And if there, if there are more than, than, than one with the same highest score, then we are semi-randomly choosing one of them. OK, so as you may probably expect there are some dangers in using priorities in, in this scheme. So first of all, like you can't really rely on those priorities. So if even if, if you specify, for example, node affinity, and there is a space, there are nodes where you are allowed to run this pod, there are enough space on them or, and stuff like that, there still can, can potentially be scheduled somewhere else. Because, like, for example, scores for pod affinity or, or spreading or something are significantly lower for those nodes than for, for other nodes that are not matching the, the node, affin uh, node affinity selector. And second like, thing that is also important here is that if you, are, if you for example, slightly change the waves of, of, your, pri of your priority functions or just uh, change the uh, Add the new priority functions. You will basically, you may get a completely different, different binding. And yes, yeah, so maybe some of you know we, this is like a, a, a scheme that different, that is different than what we are using internally in Borg in, in Google. And what we are doing in, in in Borg is that basically we are ordering our priorities in some linear order. And we are using the next prior next, next function just to break the ties from coming from the previous one. And so to, to clarify what we are doing is that we are computing the scores from the first priority function, leaving nodes only with the highest score from that function. And like for those computing the second the scores for second priority function, again, like leaving only nodes with highest score and so on. 
And this is much more predictable in terms of like what, which node will be finally chosen. So why we actually didn't choose the same scheme here in Kubernetes? And the answer is that basically this kind of decision tree-like-ish behavior we can also achieve from, from this, from the scheme we have in Kubernetes by just like specifying appropriate waves of priority functions. So if you specify the wave of one to the least important priority function, 10 for the next one and 100 to the third one and so on, you will get exactly this behavior. So it's, it's possible to simulate. So to summarize about priorities, like mm. this is very powerful mechanism, but to avoid surprises, you need to really understand it and, and use them very carefully. Uh, yeah, so the feature, the, the, the state of Kubernetes as of 1.6, like as, as Aparna and Marek already mentioned, like we have just moved to beta in 1.6 a bunch of features, including node affinity, pod affinity, and anti-affinity tains and tolerations. One more feature that we also moved to, just moved to beta, that was worth, is worth mentioning as multi-scheduler support, which basically, if you have multiple different schedulers in your Kubernetes cluster, allows your pod to specify to which, which exact scheduler is responsible for scheduling this pod. And what about our future plans? I think that like the, the, the most important thing from the scheduling perspective and the thing that a bunch of people are asking about and waiting for is the mechanism for priority and preemptions that will basically enable you to specify which pods are more important and which ports are less important. And if in, if in case if the cluster is, for example, too small and there is enough, not enough space for all of them, enable those more important pods to preempt the, the, the less important ones. And another feature that is slightly related to it is like rescheduler that will be responsible for improving the cluster state that is degrading over time. So to clarify, like even though the scheduling decision may be optimal at, at the moment when, when it was done, like because of like the churn in the cluster and pods, new pods are coming and some pods are being deleted, it can no longer be optimal after like five minutes or something like that. So the rescheduler will be able to, for example, will be responsible for example to to improve the state of the cluster over time. And for example, improve spreading of pods that will be possible later. Uh, and the last one, and, and those both two, I, we hope that we will be able to at least have some initial versions in 2017. Uh, there's one more thing, which is resource estimation, which, was, which will basically means that it, we will be estimating how many resources your pods will be using. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's like we will be able to deliver it when, one, in 2017, but that's, at least, that, that's definitely something that we would like to do at some point. Okay, so that's mostly what we had for today. So we encourage anyone who is interested in, in, in scheduling to join the community, the scheduling community, there is like special, the scheduling special interest group that is like meeting, meeting bi-weekly. There is like Slack channel for strictly scheduling related questions. There is like mailing group. So if you have any questions, you can use those or you can also, if you have the, those questions now, you can ask and catch any of our any of us to, we, we will try to like answer them. Okay, thank you. <laughs>